We are used to seeing paintings of Jesus doing extraordinary things, whether it's appearing in visions, walking on water, or even healing the sick. So seeing such a realistic portrayal like this one feels incredible. In 1872, the Russian artist Ivan Kramskoy presented this painting, and it was not entirely well received. The painting sparked various reactions, as some thought the scene was too daring for depicting Jesus expressing his emotions. For the first time, someone had dared to portray Jesus as a human being, with his own difficult and reflective moments, something we've all experienced at some point. Kramskoy admitted that he painted this piece through tears and blood. He worked on it for many years, creating sketches, making and remaking it, until inspiration finally struck. With this painting, he did not want to depict Jesus as a deity. Rather, he aimed to strip away all sanctity and relate him to people like you and me. This was quite a challenging task, but in my opinion, he managed to do so impeccably. In a landscape of desolate aridity, almost lunar, the figure of the Saviour stands, not majestic and triumphant, but dejected, collapsed, defeated. On the hands and feet of Jesus, wounds and dirt can be seen, the extreme thinness of his face, his sharp features, and his dishevelled hair provoke more unease than inner peace. Christ is suffering. Christ is a human being like us, and, as such, he doubts. What should he do? Should he continue with his mission, which frightens him so much, or give it up? The figure does not look at us. He sinks his eyes into some distant place, withdrawn, pondering, meditating. It almost feels wrong to gaze upon the painting, as if we were interrupting a moment too intimate, too solemn, too terrifying. That is the message the artwork conveys. Christ was a human being like you. Like you, he was unfortunate, and like you, he suffered and doubted. This painting brings the figure of the Son of God down from the pedestals. There is nothing heroic in this fallen, grey Christ, we could say in completely modern terms. And that was precisely what these artists of the Peredvizhniki wanted to convey. A movement founded in 1870 to bring art, and with it, culture, to the most disadvantaged sectors of society. The Peredvizhniki movement, also known as the Itinerants or the Wanderers, emerged in Russia in the late 19th century as a rebellion against the rigid norms of the Imperial Academy of Arts in St. Petersburg. Its aim was to bring art to the people, reflecting everyday life and the social issues faced by Russian society. You, the miserable, are also important. You, the forgotten, are also present in the memory of God, they once said. These artists sought a more accessible and realistic art, far removed from idealized representations. Instead of following traditional currents, they portrayed the harsh reality of peasants, the poor, vagabonds, and the inhospitable nature of Russia. Even Kramskoy, as a prominent member of this movement, shared this vision of art committed to truth and human experience. For the Peredvizhniki, painting was meant to be a medium of social reflection, capable of denouncing injustices and showing life as it truly was, without embellishments or idealizations. This philosophy was key for Kramskoy in developing his own approach to representing religious figures, such as Jesus in this painting. During his years as a student at the St. Petersburg Academy of Arts, Kramskoy painted a man reading the Bible. While his professor praised the work, a stranger critiqued it. There is no light. How do I know if this person is not just reading out of boredom? You have painted his face, but not his soul. From that moment, Kramskoy committed himself to capturing the soul in all his works. The painting Christ in the Desert was started in 1867 and Kramskoy took nearly five years to complete this representation of the soul. The scene is inspired by biblical events which recount how, after being baptised, Jesus went to the desert to be tempted for 40 days. In this period of fasting and connection with God, Jesus faced intense spiritual, emotional and physical battles which Kramskoy sought to convey in the painting. During his time in the desert, the devil tempted Jesus in three ways, offering him to turn stones into bread, tempting him to throw himself from a cliff for the angels to save him, and promising him power over all kingdoms if he bowed to him. Jesus rejected all the temptations, but this artwork allows us to glimpse into his inner struggle during that time of trial. 
In the composition, the horizon divides the painting into two realities, a barren desert filled with sharp stones and the promise of a new day at dawn. At the center, Jesus' hands clenched into fists and his expression reflect the suffering and struggle he is enduring. Kramskoy wanted to depict Jesus not only as the Son of God, but also as a human being facing difficult decisions, just like us. Jesus' bloodied feet emphasize the suffering and exhaustion of this experience. It is clear that the night before the dawn was long and arduous for him. Kramskoy spent over 10 years contemplating how to portray Christ, and the painting also reflects his own meditations on faith. When Kramskoy finally completed the painting in 1872, he declined any form of recognition, including awards and a promotion to academic status offered by the Academy. His only goal was to highlight the figure of Christ. Despite this, he sold the painting to Pavel Tretiakov, a renowned Russian businessman and art collector, who considered it one of the most precious pieces in his collection. Today, the painting is displayed at the Tretiakov Gallery in St. Petersburg. For Kramskoy, the painting did not just represent Christ, but also the inner struggle of every human being. As he wrote, there is a moment in each person's life when they must decide whether to follow God or succumb to the temptations of the world. Whether you're religious or not, I'm probably speaking for all of us when I say that this painting is incredibly powerful. For the first time in the world, someone managed to capture Jesus as a real human being, flesh and blood, and not as a superior entity that is impossible to relate to. This made it a painting that many would love, but at the same time many others would hate. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. Do you think it's okay to represent the figure of God with humanity? Or is it disrespectful to depict him as a human being with emotions? I'll be reading your comments. If you like this painting and would like to have it in your home, you can purchase it from our website where you'll receive an exact reproduction of the original painting to hang in your space. I also invite you to check out our catalogue where you'll find many other paintings and even phone cases. Shipping is completely free and by purchasing you'll be supporting the channel so it can continue making videos like this one. I'll leave the link in the description. Thank you for making it to the end. Don't forget to subscribe to continue learning about art every week. See you in the next video.